In this video, I'm going to explain how to use the software that controls the Millennia HV3R microphone preamplifier remotely. This is a Windows only application, so first we're going to have to launch an application called Parallels Desktop. It's in the dock. You click on that. It brings up this window. You click on Start Windows HP, and then soon you'll get the desktop screen. Once the desktop is loaded, you're going to click on the Start menu. And from the Start menu, you'll see a selection that says Millennium Media HV3R software. Click on that. And then you'll see this window appear, which is the software that controls the Millennium Media HV3R microphone preamplifier. It's actually a window that controls the preamp levels. Uh, to know the preamp is active, the first icon there for Unit 1 needs to be lit green. If it's not uh, green or if it's purple, then it's not active on the network. The software detects if the preamp is on the network. All right, so now we see that it's green, so we're ready to go with controlling the preamp. If we move any of these faders, we'll actually be controlling the preamp level for that input. So input one corresponds to channel one of the mic pre, etc. Also, it's important to remember that channels one and two of this particular preamp are dedicated to the four pin type inputs from the DPA microphones, which can't be powered by normal phantom power. So normally we'll start with input three. It's also important to realize that if this mic is a phantom powered mic that we have to turn on the phantom power. Um, so to do that, we would just go up here and click on the 48 volts button. And now we've activated the phantom power on channel 3. Um, and we also have the gain control, of course, here. Um, and if we right-click here, we can type in a name for the channel. And normally I put the microphone name here. Let's type in PR30 for the high PR30 microphone. Click OK. And now we see it at the bottom of the fader for that input. So now we can adjust the input level. We can also, there's a pad switch. If uh, we turn on the level all the way down and we still want to reduce the level more, click the pad switch. We have a polarity invert button. We also have a mute button. What I normally do is have all my microphones plugged in prior to turning on the preamp. And then I'll set the gain levels as to what I need to get the nominal levels that I need in the recording. Often I, I meter through digital performers meters as I adjust these faders so that I get the level precisely what it needs to be so that the recording doesn't overload. Once we have all our levels as we like them, we want to save the file, go up to the file menu and choose Save As. Give the file a name. Click on Save. Save that. So now what we need to do is set a new scene. A scene is a collection of settings for the inputs. We're just going to type in 1 for scene 1. And now it stores that in the memory. So we bring up our, whatever levels we want, we go to blank scene, there's nothing in it, and here's our scene levels. So once we've saved that, uh, we can recall this at any time. Um, I can bring up a session that I did recently, and here its settings are. Once I've opened the previously saved file, I go to its scene, and here are the levels that I've saved. So the software not only lets you set your levels remotely, but also recall all the levels that you set. So a session you did a week ago, you can recall exactly the levels that you had at that time, which is really great for continuing sessions. To review, the first thing we do is connect our microphones to the preamp. Secondly, we turn on the preamp.
Always make sure that you have the preamp turned off, though, when you're connecting or disconnecting microphones. Then we go into the control room, and we launch parallels from the dock. Once it's launched, we start Windows XP. Once Windows XP is launched, we go to the Start menu and launch the software that controls HV3R. From there, we save into a new document. I like to put the date on that document and whose session it is. Then we create a new scene to store our settings in. And then we make our settings, turning on the fan as we need it for the condenser mics and the powered mics. And I set our levels as needed, referencing once again to the metering on Digital Performer to get the meters at the right level so that they don't overload. And finally, we save again.